Good morning, everyone. Um, so this is kind of a, a video that uh, I'm starting because there's been a lot of problems that I see in the church sometimes. And I know that there are some that uh, God has called to do certain ministries, but I, I, the kind of ministry that God has called me to is really tending to the people of God. Um, the ones who need to um, break out of things, um, bondage, generational uh, issues, um, I, anything that has to do with um, counseling, stuff like that. Um, and this is just something that God has brought me into where... It's a natural thing. Not everybody can do this kind of thing. Uh, and it requires a certain type of person um, to handle these types of situations. So I didn't understand what the role was when I was going through this process. But um, so the, the, the title of this is called uh, Serving Tables. So the generic, uh, so so before I begin, I'm going to talk about sanctification. So the generic uh, meaning for sanctification is the state of proper functioning. And it's interesting uh, that I'm talking about uh, this as a uh, as a subject um, because the body needs to function properly. And if it's not, then it needs to go under correction. Um, so to sanctify someone or something uh, is to set that person or something apart for the for its intended use by its designer. So, uh, and in this case, we're setting it apart for the intended use of God. Uh, Jesus was doing this through uh, for us and through us. The Greek word translated sanctification um, means holiness. To sanctify, therefore, means to make holy. So, we we are a kingdom of priests and kings, and no matter where your position is, we are always continuing to make everybody uh, holy in the sight of the Lord, so that we uh, it, we we reach higher places of holiness. Um, uh, what that looks like means that you become a better uh, conduit. Uh, for God. Another another word for a holy person is saint. So, as you can see, we're trying to uh, help them become uh, righteous men and women of God, uh, meaning a sanctified one. So, a saint is a sanctified one. Uh, the opposite of sanctified is profane. Well, we know what the Bible talks about when it talks about practicing wickedness versus righteousness. Um, and there's a lot to say about casting your pearls before swine. Um, if you're casting your pearls before unsanctified people, um, the ones that are not willing to change or not willing to be taught not willing to be like children of god um it makes it very difficult and you're essentially casting your pearls before profane um men and women of god and so it's james for uh six but he gives more grace uh, uh why don't we do this uh five Okay, sorry, I'm looking this up well. Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that the scripture says he yearns jealousy over the spirit that has he has made uh, to dwell in us, but he gives more grace. Therefore, it says God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So as you can see, it's talking about um, here becoming that, that conduit 
Um, and what that conduit looks like is a holy person, a saint, um, uh, one that God has made holy. Yeah, uh, he yearns jealousy over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us. So if you, if you can kind of see where this is going is that God's spirit is holy, is set apart, is sanctified. Uh, and he wants no other spirit to be there. Uh, so once he has sanctified you, uh, once you have been sanctified in Christ Jesus, then he only wants you to follow that spirit. Um, but it's unfortunate that there are many who have been fallen prey to following other spirits. The message of, uh, the message of grace, the message of the gospels it is really the purpose is to get people to understand that there is only one God and that we are to seek him so that we may be uh, uh, saved. Um, and after we are saved or, or brought into salvation, we have a Lord and that Lord uh, uh, looks like Jesus. Now, a lot of people think, well, uh, I need to follow no man. Well, that's not true, because if you haven't been brought into that place of holy sanctification, sometimes you need another man uh, or a woman of God to uh, bring adjustment to your life. And, and I'll continue to talk about what that looks like. So, John seventeen nineteen, And for their sake, I consecrate myself, and then uh, the footnotes, or sanctify myself, or set apart for holy service to God, and the footnote, uh, that they they may also be sanctified, uh, and footnote, may be set apart for holy service to God in truth. Um, so you can see that, that we have to be set apart or become saints in order to bring others who are not fully sanctified into that presence so that they can be uh, become saint, uh, set apart for a service to God, um, a conduit, a tool, um, a, a vessel, uh, if you will, for God's holy service. So somebody has to start the process, and this is, we call this discipleship, but um, there are many types of disciples, um, uh, and and these disciples, they're not always, um, they, they operate under different giftings. Uh, you have some that are apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, um, <coughs> healers, <coughs> deliverers. Um, you have all these kinds of people, and, and no one is greater or less than in, in, the, in the body of God. But it requires a true man of God, uh, one that is um, full of wisdom and grace, uh, to be blameless in order to serve at, at the tables, or to serve the tables. Um, not to be served, but to serve the tables. So you basically reach the lowest position in order to bring the highest service um, to God. So why don't we look at the Hebrew uh, from the translated version? Uh, this is John seventeen nineteen, uh, and I have sanctified myself for them, so that they too may be holy. Uh, I think it's Revelations twenty to eleven. Let the evil doer uh, still do evil, and the filthy still be filthy, and the righteous still do right, and the holy still be holy. So what I'm talking about is a very crucial step here in in part of the process of who is holy and what it takes to become holy. Holiness is not for the faint, faint of heart. You really have to be set apart by God uh, to truly operate in this place. And it requires a man of wisdom. It requires a man of insight um, or woman. It doesn't really matter either or. Um, but when I say man, I mean mankind. Um, uh, so, um, but w what the promise here is, is that 
if you are in these places, that you're not going to be moved out of these places um, easily, if if you will. And God will continue to let you be the person that you choose to be in Christ. Um, now, if you choose to be evil or or filthy, um, which if we look at any of the sins, you know, and if you're a practicer of sin of any kind, uh, whether it be, uh, you know, fornication, lust, whatever, um, uh, or smoking, idolatry. I mean, idolatry can cover a whole gamut of things. Um, but the idea is to become that perfect conduit. Um, so that the Holy Spirit becomes the only thing in your life. And this is why a lot of people like to go to priests. Um, uh, why do, uh, a lot of people like to go to uh, pastors because they know that they have set themselves aside or sanctified themselves uh, as consecrated individuals. And and, th and and this is one area that I had to repent. Um, and I'm repenting now. Uh, is that I didn't understand that there was a a need or a purpose to have someone sitting in the position of serving tables, the ones who, who manages uh, the distribution of money throughout the church, throughout the church with walls. Um, uh, uh, it, it's, it all has purpose. It's, it's not that God doesn't want this stuff to happen. It's just that the way we've been doing it have been kind of going backwards a lot. And so it requires ministers of God with wisdom and and and, uh, and, and insight uh, in order to 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 truly uh, bring together uh, God's people, uh, and that's the job of the pastor. But we're not supposed to be preaching the word of God through a multitude of people. Uh, we're supposed to be focusing on individuals. That are already moving in Christ and already moving in, in, in or wanting to move higher in, in Holy Spirit. Um, and a lot of people think that, well, only Jesus can sanctify himself. No, we can sanctify ourselves. We become a sacrifice, a living sacrifice. Uh, why don't I pull that verse up? Uh, it's a lot of good verses to pull up. Okay, so it says in Romans 12, 1, a living sacrifice. I appeal to you, uh, therefore, brothers, by, a, by the mercies of God, to present to you uh, your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Okay, a lot of people think it's singing and praising and all that stuff. Uh, singing and, you know saying hallelujah in 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 church but that's not the context here worship or giving adoration to god giving thanksgiving um all of these uh basically spiritual practices we are practicing righteousness we are practicing holiness and what that looks like here is i'm talking about the next level which is serving tables <coughs> to serve tables is not for the faint of heart it's really something that is grueling and it requires a lot of a lot of a lot of like killing of your flesh you're 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 throwing yourself in the fire in order to to be a better service to to those who need higher forms of of uh holy spirit movement in the life so we have to be the intercessors for those who cannot be interceded for. <coughs> These are the people that are undergoing um, spiritual torment, the blind, deaf, and dumb spirit. Um, you know, and it requires a lot of fasting and prayer in, in, in this line of work. And so when we, when we are with these people, uh, when, when these people are, are with us the ones that serve tables we also must pray for them and bless them because they are under a lot of pressure 
uh, not just by God, but the devil is just at their doorsteps uh, all the time. Um, and so these people need to be prayed for a lot. So Jesus Christ became a conduit for God, a channel for conveying uh, water of God's word, um, who is Jesus Christ or the Christ, um, over God's people so that they may have life. So um, Jesus Christ prepared himself to channel the flow of God through himself as a vessel of righteousness that uh, he uh, that he can set others uh, as a vessel of righteousness to flow God through themselves to make others vessels of righteousness. Um, the verse is uh, implying to be fruitful and multiply by sanctifying yourself through righteousness of through the righteousness of God uh, by flowing in His Word, both written and in spirit, so others can repeat the process. Okay, so there's a lot uh, that's said here, uh, but I think that this uh, verse will help. Uh, Acts 6, uh, 1 through 4. Uh, now, in these days, when the disciples were increased in number, a complaint was, uh, a, a complaint by the Hel Helotents, um, and this is the footnote, the Greek-speaking Jews, arose against the Hebrews because the windows were being neglected uh, of daily distribution. Okay, so a lot of people were doing the fun stuff, but not many people were doing the, you know, down and dirty stuff, whatever that looked like, the, the tedious stuff, the, the boring stuff. Um, and But this boring stuff wasn't necessarily, it, it's, it's kind of like, it's, it really we they really did need these people it's just that it was being neglected and and they were and the people were not being brought there was a lot of things that were happening that that needed to be fixed in the church so and the 12 summoned the full number of disciples and said it is not right that we should give uh give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven uh, men of good re repute, uh, report, um, uh, full of the Spirit and of wisdom, and we will appoint to this duty, uh, and, and who we will appoint to this duty, but we will devote ourselves to prayer and the ministry of the word. Okay, so um, what it's basically saying is somebody has to deal with the house duties. Um, this is actually the temple duties, the, the money changers, as it's called. Um, those who are, we are not to be a, a den of robbers and thieves, but we are to be, we still need them. We still need money changers. We still need people to collect. Um, uh, all of these things, and we still need people of wisdom in the church so that they are good elders, uh, right elders. In today's age, the church with walls is acting as both a, a, an evangelism platform and motivational speaking. And that's not what it's for, but we're talking about the temple. Um, we have evangelism, uh, televangelists we have um churches that have masses coming to reach the gospel um uh within the city um but that's kind of like the tents the tents of meeting um but it's not uh it's not the same as what goes on uh in 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 the courtyards um we got the um we got the outer courts the inner courts and the holy of holies so we can't neglect either we can't neglect the evangelism and the motivational speaking uh as some people uh have to, uh have suggested but the problem is is that we've placed people with very 
high amounts of wisdom in uh in places of of uh if you will um evangelism and motivational speaking so they're not tending to the flock they're not tending to the sheep that uh have recognized the gospel and we're trying to turn the 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 uh the evangelism platform or a place of speaking a public speaking as um as a means to uh how do you say this um as a means to as as a means to 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 cater to all of the church functions and you can't do that um but what the lord has showed me is that we need all of it it's just that we can't we can't neglect one or the other and and i and as a church grows we also need to serve those who are recognizing that they need more but the church with walls uh, serves as a function to minister to those who need greater wisdom and wise counsel so once you once you figured out your you know that you want to serve jesus then what you know uh the person chosen must uh to serve tables must be duly qualified they must be filled with the gifts uh and grace of holy spirit necessary uh to rightly manage uh this trust uh men of truth and having and hating covetousness and that's kind of important too um all who are employed in the ser services of the church ought to be commended to the divine grace by the prayers of the church the blessed uh that they blessed them in the name of the lord uh, serve tables, this expression properly denotes to take care of or provide tables, uh, provide the table or for the daily needs of the family. And, and this is, this is a pretty critical element here because if you're not tending to God's people, then they're just going to kind of walk off and go astray. And, and it's not something that you do with the multitude or the 99 but you're looking for the one um that you can minister to and 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 raise up so that they are um of uh of, of strength in christ um and a lot of people might look at it as arrogance or or whatnot um but this is not arrogance when you're dealing with people who are very traumatized but the ones who are traumatized the ones who have gone gone through great trials um god is is not only going to restore to what the, the locusts have stolen but we have to recognize we have to recognize that um that these people god has called from the beginning to do a great service and the devil knows it and he's ruining their identity so we need these people that are strong and, and, and able to to handle these 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 very difficult tasks um it is an expression that we proper that uh it it is an expression that properly applies to the steward or uh to a steward or a servant we're all we are we are all stewards and servants to the lord but we're talking about someone who has fully consecrated themselves to uh, other people um, so that they may reach the fullness of Christ. Um, we can only go so far, but that doesn't mean that we can't work on a one-by-one -one individual basis. That's still creating discipleship, but, but it's also wise counsel and other things like that. So it's, it's a little bit more than just discipleship. To serve uh to serve the tables overseeing the distribution of provisions so we also have money in the church um you know a lot of people say stop giving to the church well the reason why why people say that is because they see what's going on inside the church they recognize that that the church is just doing all kinds of wickedness and and it needs a man of wisdom and integrity and and one who is not going to 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 fiddle around with god's um uh god's 
you know, sacrifice, you know, or whatever it is. It's, it could be money. It could be resources. It could be anything. <clears throat> you want to make God angry? Then, then, then mess with, with, um, the sacrifices that, that have been given by God's people. That, that'll, that'll, uh, that'll destroy a church really quick. Uh, those who serve at the tables are honest, uh, are of honest report. Uh, no room to suspect them of partiality and injustice. One thing about me is I'm not really partial to anybody, but I do love certain people more, but I don't have partiality. Um, and I do not like injustice. Um, and it, it's, 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 it's starting to help me understand who I am as a servant of God as I was doing the study this morning. Uh, and these people are full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. Now, one of the, th the two things is that God did impart me with the Holy Spirit. Um, and, and the evidence of the Holy Spirit is made known, uh, through the works of God in me. Uh, in Ecclesiastes 1.8, um, it says, for much wisdom, uh, is vexation. And he who increases knowledge increases sorrow. Um, one thing I can tell you about uh, my own personal experiences as I as I grow in wisdom uh, and knowledge uh, and insight over the years, um, I have learned a lot and I've learned uh, what it truly means to be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. You cannot hold information and and fully express yourself um uh fully express yourself in what's going on inside of you there's always something in the body of christ and there are devils demons but there are also godly men there are there's good there's bad um and a truly wise man will hold will hold wisdom until the time is right um not everybody needs to know everything all at once um and that's the way god is with us and and why would he do such a thing to to just dump information onto us um it would just make us sad to the point where we would have vexation and, and sorrow um and and it would probably kill us if we if we knew the full extent of everything that we did so sometimes he well actually that god did bring intermediaries or intercessors <clears throat> to deal with a uh to deal um with a complex problem that could be simply masked if obedience took place um or change uh took place but it's unfortunate that in order for them to fully go into godly sorrow and true repentance it requires it requires planting seeds <clears throat> in a person's soul you know and that looks like many things sometimes when you pray and you 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 seek um uh the lord uh for wisdom uh he will give you insight on or the depths of of what is really going on inside of you and that may take time it may take a lot of time and a lot of times we blame other people uh we blame situations but we don't let god look at ourselves and sometimes we think that the problems that we have are simple and they're not um it's it's sometimes it requires god to explain things in a way that we understand and that truly produces godly sorrow because we have been so stuck in in what the devil has been telling us over and over and over again that we become desensitized to the to the very nature of sin um, through shame, guilt, condemnation, that we truly haven't, for ourselves, seen the whole picture of what we've done. 
And it's easy to make someone feel shame, guilt, and, con uh, and condemned. But it's hard to bring them into God godly sorrow. And only God can truly do that because he knows us better than we know ourselves. And I can give someone a little bit of insight, um, but God has to finish the work. Always the glory goes back to God. Um, even if I have Holy Spirit in me, working in and through me, it requires God to finish the job. Um, so the battle is won by God, but I'm just, I, I am just there to be a servant, a warrior, a soldier, whatever you want to call it, because I can't do what God can do. Um, and this is what Jesus was explaining, and, and this is why Jesus held so much inside of him, because he knew so much. He, he was so sensitive to everything. Um, and if we were, we would just die of just frustration and, and sorrow. I mean, that's what vexation means. Um, so we can't be frustrated, and we can't be sad. God calls us to be full of joy and peace and kindness so if you're going to share your wisdom don't share it if you know that you're going to become sad through it yes the wisdom that we acquire brings us frustration and sadness um, and the knowledge brings us sadness but it doesn't mean we have to be in that perpetual state and the the, the way to do that is to not share something that's inside of you until the appointed time now god might might actually tell you to do it do it and it might make you sad but god will not rob you he always adds to to what uh what you're supposed to do and i've been learning more and more on, on listening to god and, and it's not as easy as i want want uh, all the time is 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 sometimes it can be hard for me to 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 constantly walk in the flow of Holy Spirit. So, anyways, First Peter's four seventeen. For it is time for uh for it is time for the judgment to begin at the household of God, and if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? So, this is the closing verse or the the argument to all of this um and i call it an argument because <clears throat> we have a church that is divided and we need people human beings made in the image of god who have the holy spirit of god to guide other people who need to be brought into god's presence <clears throat> it's how god made it is how christ made it is how he Christ is Lord of Lords, King of Kings, but he is not the God the Father. But he has has shown us how to live in all the positions in his life. He gave us the example, the the leadings, and we are to live by his example, but his example has has been written in in, in the the um the, the scriptures, the old testament as well as the new testament. Um, so the Bible is the Torah, the word and, and the Torah are, are store, still valid. So it is time uh, for it is time for judgment to begin with the household of God. So what is what is judgment mean? Is, does it mean condemnation? No. Does it mean um, destruction? Not really. Does it mean uh, 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 to turn everything into to a, a, a into rubble not really is it what it means is to bring order to to when god brings judgment there's always some there's always mercy tied to it there's always grace tied to it so it's like it's like an if then clause you know this is the judgment you know what's going to happen if you continue on with your your sin but to give you that out these are the things that you need to do and that brings order to the church and so we have to be right before god that is righteousness 
And so if we follow those instructions, um, these instructions bring life to God's people. Um, <clears throat> so anyways, uh, that can be a whole discussion in of, of itself. But to continue on, and it begins with us, uh, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel? And we already know what happens to those who are not obeying God's word. They will not make it uh, to the kingdom of God. And, and those who sit in the pew, those who wave their hands and are still operating in sin, knowingly or unknowingly, may not make it. Um, it's only by the grace and mercy of God that we have to ask and plead for forgiveness on a daily basis. We have to do it. We have to do it. Um, so anyways, uh, there could be more, but I just wanted to end with that. And, and I hope everybody has a good day in Jesus name. All right. Bye-bye.